Ryan Anderson. I'm the B shift lieutenant at station 31. I'm a rescue diver. Incidents we'll respond to are pretty much anything that METCOM determines we could help with in, uh, around, on, or under the water. Any submersion or immersion type of incidents, uh, evidence recovery, vehicle recovery, planes, boats, cars, anything that's under the water. We have uh, salvage divers and rescue divers that are uh, qualified and ready to respond and either recover those uh, the equipment or make any kind of a rescue that we can uh, from that incident. I'm Joe Carbonaro with South Metro Fire Rescue. I've been uh, at Station 31 for about, um, I say about 22 years. Been a diver for about 23 years. And uh, this is our dive rig that uh, it used to be actually a heavy rescue back at 9-11. Um, so it was at 9-11 for rescue support. So we uh, went to Long Island, New York to spec this out to make it our new dive rig. We actually had a dive van before, which is a lot smaller than this, but um, this has actually been a very good rig for us. It's uh, very easy to, to drive. Um, since I'm the engineer and the diver, uh, if we go on a rescue, I probably won't be driving this. But if it's on a recovery, I will drive it. And then once we get to the scene, We'll figure out what to do from there. So just a little rocker switch here, side of here, just the shift gear, park and brake, and off you go. It does have a, a PTO generator, so if we're on scene for a while, we can uh, start the start the generator, um, put it in PTO, and uh, we can run lights. Uh, we usually don't dive at night, but um, if we do a night operation, we have a light tower, we have generators, we have, uh, it used to have cord reels, we took some of those off, but it's got a, it's got a winch. Um, it's pretty a versatile rig for us. Um, so there's, we always, uh, so engine 31 will cross staff to the uh, dive rig. So if we cross staff, the engine goes out of service and all three of us will jump on the rig. Um, we do have room to fit quite a few people back here. We, we can fit uh, four back here and two in the front. And then we'll just go around the compartment. So there's all the gauges, all the switches for the uh, generator, for the different outlets and lights and light tower. There's an air cord reel. We do have a uh, chainsaw here for winter time um, for ice operations, if need be. Uh, a lot of times it's just for training so we can cut a hole in the ice and practice ice diving. Um, and then just some other tools, we've got uh, bolt cutters. We do have bull horns here, which actually come in to play pretty well, especially if we're doing swift water. Guys from the shore can kind of yell down or speak through that down to us on the on the water on the rushing river, which is pretty loud. Bullhorn helps with that. So we got a couple setups here for uh, for diving once we. Uh, we can get dressed in the back and we have these setups in the back also but if you feel that the setup that you that fits you is not in the back you can come out here in your dry suit with the weight harness on ready to go and then you just kind of undo these these straps here and then you just go ahead and slide in put your stuff on you got your stuff on put on the bc and then you can just flip this up, this little bracket here, you flip it up and you can just walk off and you're ready to go. So we try to do, as, as far as rescue goes, we try to do uh, 
do it with a little bit of speed. But uh, recovery is more laid back. So we'll transition from rescue mode to recovery mode after 90 minutes from the time of dispatch based off of the best information we have. And in rescue mode, we'll move as fast as we can. We'll get a diver dressed and ready and in the water um, as quick as we can locate our last scene. Plan. The 90 minute figure is what we use at South Metro. Other international dive rescue agencies will use uh, 60 minutes. But we found in cold water and our diving in our environment that 90 minutes is still a, a viable time frame. We also do uh, swift water uh, rescues and recovery. And inside here is a RDC, a rapid deployment craft. Um, it basically, uh, it's a little, it's like a raft that kind of looks like a, a banana. It's open on both ends, so if rushing water, if you're cut, caught in a low head dam, rushing water can go onto the um, the platform where the art where the uh, rescuers are but it will spill off the side so it won't tip over um, back here we have uh, boogie boards for swift water we have uh, metal detectors we we do a lot of work with police um, sometimes police will call us and ask us to help recover a weapon in in, in water and, and if it's uh, actually this will go underneath water also so it'll help us uh, find metal objects underneath underneath water. Uh, we do have an uh, underwater camera. I'm Derek Jordan, I'm a firefighter here on B shift at 31s. I've been here for just about a year. Um, I'm also on the dive team. In this compartment here, we have a lot of rope bags that we will use for uh, setting up boat operations in swift water. So this is gonna be a longer recovery process we're going to need more time to set up anchors and uh, a lot of lines that's just going to make it easier and safer to get a boat moving around a swift water operation we also have an extra uh, bcd unit here um, this is just the extra extra large um, just for some of the um, larger people in the dive team there's not very many but uh, we have one extra that we keep on here as well. So here, here we have another little memorial for um, the Mastic Fire in Long Island. Um, their res heavy rescue 10 unit that they had, that this was used before. Um, we just keep this on just for remembrance so, as well as the pictures on the side. So this back right compartment is probably uh, the most used compartment I think from the outside um, so how we made it as simple as possible was to get everything that we would need for a dive and put it all in one area so if we go on a dive call and we have other engines and trucks there and medic units there we're gonna have a lot of people there who are gonna to wanna to help us. And the best way to do that is to shuttle all of the equipment that we're gonna to need to complete the dive operation. Um, the dive team is a very equipment intensive um, team. So there's a lot that goes into it. We like to have everything on this shelf down to the shore when we complete a dive and also these clipboards. These clipboards have uh, really um, straightforward, basic way to, to do uh, correct interviews for witnesses. And that's a very uh, key point for the operation because if we don't get the right or the specific enough information, then we could be in a totally different area than that we need to be searching. So then we make it easier by having that already ready to go. And also in this box here, we have all of our communication uh, rope lines and um, headsets that we'll need on shore. To make it easier again, we've got pictures of, of things that will need to be going on down there. Now in here, the rope line that we use, it does two things for us. 
for one, it keeps us tethered in. And when we're in there and we're diving, you can't really see anything underwater. So this helps us keep us in a correct uh, path. That way we're not skipping or, or missing any areas in our search pattern. And it also is a communication um, tool. So we use uh, tugs as far as um, mechanical communication between the, the person on the shore and the person who is diving. And then we also have uh, communications here that we plug into our mask. And then we have headphones in our mask that we're able to talk back and forth to each other. And this here is just a little pull off line that we would attach to ourselves. And if for some reason we needed to bail out, we would, we would pull on this and we would able, we'll be able to safely go up to the surface. And this bottle here, this is our, what we called RIT bottle. Uh, we use the term um, RIT as it's, it's very similar to the RIT crew on a, a fire ground. So rapid intervention team, this is what a diver, a backup diver is gonna use to go assist a diver that is in trouble uh, underwater if that happens. So this is just gonna give us some air that we're able to hook up to the diver at the bottom and help them reset and then figure out what we need to, to assist them. Um, the only real emergency you have underwater is running out of air. Everything else we can slow down and, and figure out. All right, in this compartment, this is our swift water equipment. So we've got helmets, helmets and PFDs, uh, throw bags, more PFDs, um, boat-based PFDs. So these are not for swift water, these are just for use on the boat. Um, this is the go-to area for all of our swift water swimmers. Basic uh, scuba tanks and some chairs. Sometimes we're on scene for a long time as we uh, uh, do the operation. So we end up using a lot of air. Uh, in this compartment, this is all our salvage equipment. So in situations where we're recovering a car or a boat, we have lift bags here and attachment hardware so that we can attach um, lift bags to boats and to cars and lift them up out of the water. And then we hook, uh, a wrecker will come in and we'll hook a cable to the car and pull it out of the water. Uh, seats and more comm units. And this is for filling air tanks uh, from our compressors. We don't have a compressor at the stations. Okay. And now we can kind of walk you through the back of the rig as we would um, on a real call. All right, so when we get a call, uh, the rescue divers come back here and get dressed. Um, we want to be as ready to dive as possible when we arrive on scene. Uh, the lieutenant, myself, be up front, uh, figuring out where we're going and talking on the radio, setting up the command stuff. Uh, Derek will be driving us, or if it's a rescue, Derek will be in back here. How he starts is he'll locate his personal dive bag here which is all stored, all of our divers on the east side of I-25, which is about half of our team, all of them have their dive equipment stored back here. So we have a east side and a west side dive team at this point based off of our uh, target hazards, which are the major reservoirs and the areas we see most of our drownings at. And so uh, the folks on the west side of I-25, and this is rough, uh, METCOM are the ones that can tell where the call is coming from and who's actually going to be closest. Uh, and if it's a major drowning, then both of us will go. But the uh, Station 16, which is Blakeland and C-470, or Blakeland and Santa Fe, uh, they have a very similar setup to this, and they'll respond to everything, all the dive calls to the west of I-25. And They have all of the dive gear for divers on duty um, that'll be diving out of that house.
So Jordan locates his personal dive bag with his dry suit, um, gloves, booties, everything that he needs here. Anything that's specific to his uh, diving equipment, he'll pull that out and he'll get that uh, suit on. Once he's got his suit on, he'll locate his weights that he needs and fins. He'll get those ready. He'll get his weights on and once he has his weights on, he can select the uh, BC that he wants to wear. We have these organized in uh, order of size. So medium larges all the way down to our extra larges and our double XL on the outside of the rig. So these, the divers know which BC they're gonna dive in and they've checked it out in the morning the same way we check out our SCBAs, make sure they're everything's ready to go for them. Uh, buoyancy control device, BCD. So how it works is this tank, once it's pressurized, you can use these valves to inflate and deflate this and that changes your buoyancy in the water, allows you to either float at the top or if you let air out of it, it'll allow you to sink to the bottom um, or even trim yourself to where you can float in, in the water column. Yep, so buoyancy control device is, is what this is. If we navigate underwater and keep track of all of our critical dive information with a dive computer here. So this gives us our depth, our water temperature, which is important for drowning victims, and the amount of air we have in our air tank. So gear, BCs, all of, these are all our fins, um, pretty much one size fits all. Weight vests are sized according to the, the same principle of smallest to largest. Um, and divers will adjust the weight. All of them come with 42 pounds They're in it? 32. 32 pounds in it. And uh, divers will adjust that based off of how much uh, weight there they actually need. Um, total six, six setups. Seven with the X, double XL. Okay, seven, and then we have three on the boat as well. Um, so we can dive a lot of divers, but what constrains us is the amount of air bottles we have and the comm suit uh, units that we have. Uh, and we don't want to get any divers entangled underneath the water. So we'll usually only have one diver under the water at a time. We'll have another diver that is uh, a RIT diver or a backup diver who's ready to go if he has any issues. And then we'll have a third diver who's what's called a 90 percenter. And that person has all of their dive gear on. They just need to click their mask in and uh, put on their fins and they can dive too. So we'll have three divers pretty much ready to go. And the other suits are either backups or for when those divers come up. Divers are pretty exhausted after a tank uh, underwater. And so we'll rotate them out as we need to. Ice rescue and exposure suits here. So for our ice dives, these are the same suits that we have on our all of our engines. Um, and it's seasonal, so this is wintertime stuff right here. Uh, summertime, it's all filled with swift water dry suits. Um, so in the dive team, we have a lot of different kinds of suits. Um, you may have seen this one more than often. This is a wetsuit, and we don't really use these as much. Uh, one part because of how cold our waters are in Colorado, and another part is because of the um, haz hazmat that we could be possibly diving in. So any kind of uh, vehicle recovery or um, evidence preservation dive, there's going to possibly be some hazardous materials in there that we don't want getting on our skin. Uh, with this, you're able to get wet, that's why it's called a wetsuit, and some of that oils or anything else could go through this material. We like to dive in what's called a dry suit and they're a little bit bigger and they pretty much protect all of your body from getting wet and any kind of uh, material getting onto your body. Uh, we have gloves that attach to these wristlets and then we have our uh, hood that goes over our mask here. Uh, this piece connects to our uh, buoyancy control device and that just helps keep a little bit of air in here 
because the deeper we go, the more this might constrict onto our body. Uh, this isn't very thick, so as far as cold water in Colorado, we, whenever we wear these dry suits, we like to wear what we call woolies. And this is gonna be our insulation that keeps us warm underneath. Every engine and truck will have what we call these Mustang suits. And this is um, primarily used for ice rescues, surface ice rescues. So all of the South Metro engines and trucks will be able to handle a call where somebody's on the surface of the ice uh, with this uh, here. And we would attach a rope to the front. And when we come in contact with the person who's on the ice, we would pull them both in towards the surface. One more suit that we dive in is for swift water, and that's also a dry suit. So it's pretty much exactly like this one, just with lighter material. And we use that for all of our swift water calls. So this is our Boston Whaler. Um, it's supposed to be unsinkable. It's supposed to, you could probably flood it and not have it go down. But uh, if we need to do uh, boat ops at, uh, at a reservoir, um, most of the time the state parks will meet us there, so they'll have their boat also. Back in the day we just had the inflatable Zodiac. Um, and so we would definitely need the state parks boats to meet us there to, to help do the operations, but now we have our own boat. Um, like I said, most likely they'll show up, but if they didn't show up, we have everything we need on this boat. Um, and so 16s, Dive 16 still has the inflatable Zodiac. Maybe, uh, have, and they also have a jet ski on that end. Um, we just have our boat. We have setups back here. But we do not, other than your own personal dry suit, uh, that's all you need to get on the boat because everything else is on the boat here. We have comm units. Uh, we have everything stored underneath the uh, steering wheel cabinet there for uh, communications. Uh, we have our setups, different sizes, so make sure you have your size before you get on. We've got PFDs, we have lights, we have radio, we have sonar, uh, we have side scan sonar. So what we'll do with the side scan, if it's a recovery or even a rescue, uh, we can get out there right away and sonar the area, the last scene point area. And if we have a hit, we'll, we'll uh, throw over the side some H floats to mark our area, and then we'll position to dive off the side. So once uh, we have the H floats out, we'll position, then we drop the front anchor, and then we have to back up a little bit, drop the rear anchor, and then kind of center ourselves back towards the middle. And now we're anchored, we're not gonna go anywhere. This, this boat does need two anchors. The old Zodiac only needed one anchor that would keep it from moving. Um, so once we're positioned, we'll have a dive, we'll splash the diver, and then we can go to the 360 sonar. So 360 sonar, you're not supposed to be moving. And actually we can guide the diver. If we can see the object on the screen on the 360 sonar, we can splash the diver and we can actually direct the diver straight to the object instead of doing patterns. So if we have our object, we're not going to waste time doing patterns. We can guide the diver through commos, uh, through communications, and just get them straight to the object. So that saves us a lot of time with this boat. We didn't have it with the old Zodiac. Um, so that's a that's a big plus for us is that is that 360 sonar. Uh, but we can also do um, salvage ops off of this. We'd have to bring more equipment, more bottles, more uh, airlines, and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty versatile. Got a big motor on the back. This is the 360 sonar. And then down here is a side scan sonar. So like I said, we'll start we'll start with the side scan sonar. And it the water should not be turbulent and we shouldn't go any faster than about four or five miles an hour with that. Um, so we'll do our patterns, get a hit, throw the H-floats over the side. 
position ourselves, anchor, and then we'll switch to the 360. So I say uh, fully loaded with a bunch of guys, I'd say around 28 miles per hour. 